Have you been struggling with local installs, dependency nightmares and insufficient GPU power in your AI projects? I have. For many, including myself, Google Colab has been the go-to solution. But let's be honest, Colab has its own set of problems. In today's video, I'll introduce you to a game-changing alternative called Lightning AI that I wish I had discovered sooner. Plus, I'll be giving you a complete tutorial with a walkthrough and examples to help you get started right away. Just so you know, this video isn't sponsored by Lightning AI. It's simply my honest thoughts and experiences after trying out the platform for a while. As always, you'll find a written version of this video linked in the description with all the links, commands and code examples you need to try Lightning AI out for yourself. I'm a local workhorse at heart. I prefer working directly on my machine whenever possible. However, three major pain points have emerged in my AI development journey. One, GPU constraints. Running heavy-hitting tools like large language models or AI image generators like stable diffusion on my local GPU setup has been a struggle. Two, package management headaches. As I experiment with new AI frameworks, I'm constantly installing and uninstalling packages on my machine. But dealing with dependencies, virtual environments, and compatibility issues is a nightmare. The constant juggling of package updates and conflicts has turned into a time-consuming hassle that I'd rather avoid. 3. Fear of experimentation To be honest, I've grown tired of risking my local setup while trying out new tools. One misstep can lead to a mess on my machine a situation I'd like to avoid altogether. So, I've been trying to make Collab work for my AI development needs, but honestly, it's just not cutting it. First of all, getting reliable GPU access is only available with their paid plans, which adds up quickly. I'm also not a fan of the default interface in Collab. For Python projects, it forces me into Jupyter Notebook, which is okay, I guess, but I really prefer using Visual Studio Code. I like being able to organize my project files and create a structured workspace that's tailored to my needs, and Colab just doesn't offer that. And then there's the storage issue. Since Colab doesn't have persistent storage, I end up relying on Google Drive for storing my data and models. But let's be real, Google Drive has its own set of limitations, especially when it comes to storage space. Upgrading adds to my monthly expenses, and I'd rather not spend that money. To be honest, these issues have been really frustrating me, and they've finally pushed me to look for a better alternative. As I was searching for a better alternative, I stumbled upon Lightning AI and it really checked all the boxes I had been looking for. What I wanted was something that felt like my own local Visual Studio Code setup, but with an added bonus, a seamless virtual environment that handles all the installation and dependency management for me. On top of that, I needed access to additional GPUs, which Lightning AI delivers. But what really excites me is the freedom to experiment without any hassle. With Lightning AI, I can try out new things, see if they work, and then just move on. No worrying about messing up my setup or wasting time on tedious config changes. And the best part? Lightning AI is free, with some limitations that I'll cover in more detail later on. Enough talk, let's get over to Lightning AI and see its features in action. To get started with Lightning AI, head over to their website and click on Start Free. Note that if you're signing up with a personal email address like Gmail, be prepared for a possible waiting list. It might take a few days to receive approval. 
On the other hand, using a professional email domain from your company or educational institution often grants instant access. After logging in, you'll be taken to your dashboard, the central hub where you can manage all your projects and resources. One of the coolest features is the concept of a studio. Essentially, a persistent cloud environment that functions like a laptop, but on the web. These are all the studios I've created so far. Think of it as a dedicated workspace that retains everything you install, download or add, from files to datasets, so you can pick up right where you left off whenever you restart. And don't worry about costs when it's not in use, the studio goes into sleep mode, saving you money. What's more, each studio is a self-contained environment, isolated from others on the platform. You can have multiple studios, and I recommend dedicating each studio to a specific task or project. For example, if you're working on stable diffusion, create a dedicated studio just for that. Similarly, set up separate studios for tasks like AI training, data science, or other specialized projects. You'll also get access to studio templates, which are pre-made projects created by others on Lightning AI. You can use them as is, modify them to fit your needs, or even combine them with your own ideas. Plus, since you're part of a community, you'll have the opportunity to share and publish your own studios and projects, helping others learn from your experiences and collaborate more effectively. Click on New Studio to create a new studio. Since I want to show you a coding example, let's choose a code environment. If you're a VS Code user, you'll love Lightning AI's interface. It's identical in style and functionality, with all the features you rely on. This means a faster, more streamlined workflow and greater productivity. A far cry from the limitations of Collab's more basic interface. Take a look at your new studio you'll notice a main.py file with some basic Hello World code to get us started. Now let's swap that out for our own code. I've put together a simple Python program that uses Seaborn to create a scatter plot and stores it in a PNG file. Essentially, it just plots a bunch of random dots on a grid. Now let's run this program. As expected, we get an error saying it can't find the Seaborn module, which makes perfect sense since Seaborn isn't part of the standard Python package. To fix this, we need to install it first. Just like on your local machine, you'd use pip to install Seaborn with the command pip install Seaborn. Now that it's installed, let's try running our program again. And there it is. It executes without a hitch, producing a nice scatterplot as a PNG file. Now let's take a closer look at our studio. On the right side of your screen, you'll see a series of options, starting with your studio environment. This is where you can put your studio to sleep if you no longer need it. Studios auto sleep when idle, and the default setting is 10 minutes. However, you can change this time to suit your needs. Imagine you start a Python script and close your laptop. The studio will keep running in the background until the script finishes, then auto-sleep. Let's take a look at the current studio settings. As you can see, our current studio is running on CPU. With Lightning AI, users have access to a free studio environment that provides four CPU cores and 16 gigabytes of RAM. However, there's a limit. If you let your studio run continuously for more than four hours, you'll need to either upgrade to a paid plan or restart the studio to start the counter again. 
If you need more resources, simply click this button to switch to GPU mode. Keep in mind that using a GPU will consume tokens. On your free plan, you get 15 free credits per month. One credit is one dollar, which can give you up to 22 hours of GPU usage. One of the best things about Lightning AI is the flexibility to switch between CPU and GPU modes as needed. You can definitely do this to save tokens, allowing you to write your code at your own pace and then switch to GPU when you need to test or retry. This approach will save you a lot of time and money. Moving on to the environment section, you can see and change various settings here. For instance, this studio is currently set up with Python version 3.10.10 by default, but you can easily switch to a different version by clicking on it and selecting the one you prefer. Setting environment variables is also extremely straightforward here. Essentially, this feature replaces the need for a .env file, making it easy to manage and customize your settings. In addition, there's a secrets area attached to your profile that allows you to securely store API keys and access them across all your studios. This is a convenient way to keep sensitive information organized and easily accessible. If you need a new terminal, you can quickly access one right here in your studio. Alternatively, you can also open a terminal by navigating to Visual Studio Code's native terminal menu. In terms of storage, Lightning AI provides you with a convenient file server through the TeamSpace drive. This shared drive allows you access to persistent storage that's available across all your studios. On the free plan, you get 100 gigabytes of dedicated storage space, which is perfect for storing project files, datasets, and model checkpoints, giving you ample room to work on your projects without worrying about running out of space. With the Jupyter option, you can transform your workspace into a fully functional Jupyter Notebook IDE. And when you're ready to switch back, simply click on the VS Code symbol above that. That covers the basic options. But there's more. You also have access to additional features and settings, as well as the ability to install various plugins by clicking on this plus sign icon. This is where you can further customize your experience and expand your capabilities. As you navigate through your VS Code environment, you'll notice a set of analytics displayed at the top, providing insights into CPU usage, RAM consumption, and disk space utilization. This information gives you a quick snapshot of how your studio is performing. Beyond the features and settings within your studio, you also have the ability to collaborate with others by sharing your workspace. You can invite users to join and work together. Additionally, you can publish your studio on the Lightning AI platform, where it can be showcased and utilized by others. This is a great way to share your work, get feedback, and even learn from others who are using your published studio. One thing to note is that each new studio is assigned a random name by default. However, you can easily customize this to something more memorable up here. This way, when you revisit your studio in the future, you'll be able to quickly identify it. Now that we've completed all the necessary configurations and changes, let's put our studio to sleep by clicking here. This will initiate a few seconds of saving time before returning you to the main studio list. When you're ready to restart your studio, simply reopen it from the list. The good news is that all the necessary configurations and dependencies are retained, so you won't need to reinstall anything upon restarting. To demonstrate this, let's delete the scatterplot image and see how our Python script behaves. As expected, running the script again works seamlessly because we've already installed the required modules, such as Seaborn, earlier. This shows that your studio remembers all the necessary information, so you can jump back in 
without any hassle or reinstallation required. That's all for today's tutorial. I hope it was helpful. If there's something specific you'd like to see covered in the future, let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you'll join me soon in my next video.